It's Teresa with Cowgirl Media, and today I'm going to show you how to create an Instagram landing page on your website. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about why you would want to do that. So um, I definitely recommend setting up a landing page on your own website to send people to from your Instagram profile. As a marketer, one of the things we need to be doing on a regular basis is driving more traffic to our website. So if you have a website, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use a service such as Linktree when ideally you would want to send people directly to your website, not via a third party site. Linktree does seem to be best for people that don't have a website so they can have a central location to send people to from their Instagram profile. And why do we need to send people to a central location like a landing page? And that's because for those of you that might not be that uh, fluent in Instagram yet, Instagram does not parse your links in your post caption. So if you put in your website address, for example, Instagram will not make that clickable. They do not want people to leave Instagram, so they don't make that clickable. Uh, even worse, they don't allow any copying, selecting and copying of that text from a mobile device. I know if I'm on my PC, on my Instagram account, I can copy and paste, but that's an extra step. And people don't really wanna be bothered to select text anyways, because, it's not always precise and you miss a character or have too many or whatever. So we have one link that is um, parsed in our profile and you need to make that count. So we'll send people to one location. And as a business owner, as a marketer, you would want to send people directly to your website. And there's several reasons for this and I'm gonna go into that next. So one of the, the first reason in my mind is that you own your website and everything on it. You don't own your Linktree page, especially if your website is self-hosted as opposed to a um, service like Wix or Weebly, you have total control over what happens there. So Linktree has gone down a couple times in the past and you, there's nothing you can do to fix it. And basically people coming from your Instagram are kind of stuck. They have no place to go. Whereas if it's your website that does go down, um, unfortunately that does happen on occasion for various reasons, you at least have some control there in getting it fixed. So reason number two is you can't fully brand yourself on Linktree like you can on your website. They have limitations, of course, because they can't please everybody but your website is different. It's already branded for you. Reason number three, if you have a website, using a step in between your audience and your website just makes no sense from, uh, not just from a user's point of view, but from a Google Analytics point of view as well. And Google Analytics, I talk all the time about uh, pleasing the Google gods because they are what makes the web world go, go round and we need to do what we can to get our statistics up. And that in turn drives more traffic to our website. And it's a beautiful circle when it all works right. So reason number four, and this is gonna explain the Google, Google Analytics portion of it, is that when a user goes directly to your website, that counts as a unique visitor, which improves your Google stats, of course. And yes, that's gonna happen even if people come from Linktree. Here's the difference. Once they're on, if they're on Linktree and they go to your website, and they they um, they click a link on on uh, on Linktree, and they go to whatever your offer is, and they decide they don't want to go anywhere else. Bam, they're gone. That is called a bounce. And the more people that go to your website and leave from the same page they got there from, the higher your bounce rate is. So the idea is to get them to click through. That's why homepage layout strategy is so important so that you can convince them to click through, thereby lowering your bounce rate. If you send people from Instagram directly to your Instagram landing page on your website, clearly chances are really good 
like really high, they're going to click on one of your buttons that you have on that site and click through, thereby lowering your bounce rate, which makes your Google statistics look better. And Google will, Google will base it or return sites and search, pardon me, Google returns sites based on different statistics. And that is all part of it. So um, yes, getting them to click through from your landing page on your website to whatever uh, their end destination is, is a great reason for building your own Instagram landing page. So yes, it's a bit more work to make your own landing page, but it's um, not that big of an effort. And if, um, if you can drive traffic to your website instead of a third party tool and help increase your Google statistics, I'm all for that. And as a website owner, I would hope you are as well. So let's get started with the tutorial. So this is my uh, this is the mobile version of my um, Instagram landing page and I'm logged in. So it's giving me an edit option here. You wouldn't see that if you were just not logged in or not an admin. So um, here is what this looks like on my desktop. And it, it's basically um, the same thing. It's just formatted a little differently. But when it gets to mobile, it's reformatted like this. So um, this is, if you're familiar with the WordPress, of course, this is what it looks like in the back end. And this is, I use the old WordPress editor. I do not use Gutenberg, but I will show you something else in just a second. And this is basically, I using a grid here of thirds to set up my columns. So you can see this is actually three columns, but nothing is in these two columns. And that keeps this very, um, nice and tight here in one area. And then I'm using short codes to add buttons. And this particular short code is from the Intense Short Code plugin, which offers so much stuff. You can't even believe how much functionality that can add to your site. Uh, this is a premium plugin. However, it is built into the core of the WordPress framework that I use to build all my websites. So this is, I just wanted to show you what this looks like if you're familiar with short codes. This is how I've basically done it. And I've added some custom CSS in my uh, custom CSS file to make all of these buttons full width within that area, which is this column here. So what if you have no clue what I'm talking about and I'm getting that deer in the headlights look from you? right now, then we there's something else that we can do to that's a little simpler for some of you. And you may be used to working with um, WP Bakery or Visual Composer. This is Visual Composer, it's the same thing. This is also a plugin that comes in the core of my uh, premium framework that I use to build all my websites. So this is not an additional cost with that particular um, WordPress framework that I use. And so I, um, I have a blank page here. And essentially what you do when you use one of these um, building type of plugins is you add elements. You add rows and columns and elements to the page. So one of the nice things about using this is you don't have to separate it into thirds because it will still display properly. So um, this, if you add, so we're going to add elements to the page and you have to add a row in order to add any content. So we'll click add element. We'll add a row and it puts our row here. This row of icons is to set settings for the full row. And then here you would add content within that row. So what I want to do here is, is I've got my page title up here, which will show up right here. And then I want to add my photo and my Instagram name. So we will click here and add um, a single image. It sources the media library. It's already there. And if it wasn't, you would just upload it by clicking this Upload Files tab. But my, the file I want is already there. And I'm going to select it. You want to 
Um, ideally, you want to use something that's square. So I have two of these headshot images here, but this one is actually perfectly square. It's 500 by 500 pickle, pixels. And I'm going to set that as my image. And I want it the thumbnail size, which depending on your media settings, typically the standard is 150 by 150. No caption. I want it aligned in the center. And I want a circle image. So this will automatically apply the styling for you. You can put a border around it, an outline, and a shadow, a shadow and a border. But I'm just going to go with a plain old circle, nothing fancy. No action on click because we're not linking that image to anything. And we don't need to do anything in the design options. And then we're going to save these changes. So if we wanted to preview what this is going to look like, we would click the preview button. And it's showing the image there, a nice circle. And it's going to show uh, this is centered uh, WordPress titles. Page titles often are not centered, but if that's something you want to do, there is CSS code you can do for that. But if somebody's looking at it on a phone, you're not going to notice a whole lot of discrepancy here. Maybe on a tablet, you would notice a little bit more. But it's not a, a deal breaker, in my opinion there. So then I want to add some text. So we're going to click here and add some more content to this row. And we're going to add a text block. And I'm, so here you have a basic uh, WordPress editing screen, um, which you can make bigger if you need to. And, but I'm simply going to add my Instagram name. And I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to save changes. And then I want to add... Uh, you can add this phrase here to instruct people what to do. You don't have to do that. I'm going to leave that out for the purposes of this tutorial. But we're going to add a button. If I can find the buttons. This is intense short code buttons, and I don't want to add. That's right in front of me. Can't So obvious, I can't see it. So this is the text that would be on the button. So let's say you wanted to send somebody to your services page. You would type that in here. Then you would select the link to get to your services page. And if you don't know how to, if you don't want to type that link right in, you can search for the page. I'm going to pick that page right there and set that link. And the style I want is I'm going to go with just a flat button because I like that look. I want square. And here you can select some pre some colors. And um, unfortunately, there's customizing this takes a little bit more CSS. But um, these colors, there's quite a few of them that would work with a lot of different themes. So um, this might be the only limitation you would find with this. The size, I'm going to leave it just normal for now, and I'll show you why in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and set it center. I want a full width button so it takes up the entire space of the screen that's being used to view it. So I don't, if you wanted to do some custom CSS here, you would add that class into this field and then set your custom CSS with that class. Uh, that's a tutorial for another day that's pretty advanced. Design options. Um, these, unfortunately, changing the background color here doesn't work. It changes the background behind the button, not the background color of the button itself. So then we'll go ahead and we'll click Save Changes. And if we preview that now, we'll see what it looks like. And then, of course, if you look at the mobile version, You'll see it goes across the full width of, you know, this is like a, an iPhone size screen. So that's basically it. Then what you can do from here is if you want to duplicate this button, you click this icon, which is cloning. And then you would click the pencil icon to edit it. And you would change the um, name. You would change the the link
and all your other settings will be the same. So you don't have to spend as much time setting those. Click save. Click save and then we'll preview it again. And there we go. We have our second button. It needs a nice space in between. So it's easy for people to click on and it looks really nice. And um, the last thing I'll tell you is that I do recommend when you do this, if you can, modify your header to remove the navigation. So you just send people to the specific areas um, that you want them to go to from your Instagram. They don't necessarily need access to the full navigation at this point. But of course, when they click through, they're gonna end up on your website and they will have access to the full navigation. And as you can see here, I also removed my footer for this particular page. And a lot of different themes these days, you can modify the header and the footer based on what page template you're using. Um, a lot of WordPress themes have different layouts for different pages, different types of pages that you can select from. The framework I use to build all my websites makes this really easy. So, um, and honestly, I'm, I, I've been using this particular framework for so long, I'm not really familiar with a whole lot of other WordPress themes. This just works for everything. So I don't see a big point in changing because it's so versatile. So you might have to do a little digging to figure out what works best or how to do that in your particular WordPress theme. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and comment and I will try my best to answer all your questions. Good luck. Thanks for watching.